People who work in surveillance, what's the most unexplained or creepy thing you've seen on video? LPO here. I see crazy crap all the time. One of the creepiest things I have seen was a string of toys moving on its own down an aisle. It was like a duck with smaller ducks. Of course, I had to investigate. When I zoomed in, I was surprised to see that they were real ducks. I would have loved to see your expression at the point you realized they were actual ducks. Nothing like an emotional roller coaster from creepy as frick to super adorable. Had a game camera out once and I had a neighbor who would just walk through my property. I didn't care. The place is pretty and there's no back fence. But I kept having sheep go missing so I set out a camera. The camera caught my neighbor walking by. Then like 30 seconds later a mountain lion walked by it stalking him. It apparently never attacked as he was fine. But he had no idea how close he was to that thing. Maybe your sheep are missing due to no back fence. I used to work overnights at a hotel, and would monitor the security cameras. They would detect motion and a little indicator would blink when motion was, well, detected. Anyway, it always gave me the creeps when I'd hear the elevator ding. I'd run out to the lobby to greet the guests to make sure they didn't need something or whatever, and nobody would get off the elevator. I'd watch the tapes and see the motion indicator blinking on a floor, then see the elevator open on that floor. Then see the elevator open on the ground floor and the motion indicator blink on the camera down the hall. Gave me the heebie-jeebies. Also one time I was in my office in the middle of the night and it sounded like someone banged on the door with the side of their fist. Just one single slam. You can see me reacting to it on the video. My head whipped to face the door where the sound came from. Then immediately whipped around to stare at the camera to see who the frick was outside my door. There was nobody there. And none of the motion sensors had picked up anything. Not fun finishing the rest of that shift. I was house sitting in a huge house and set up a canary camera near my bedroom. I had an uneasy feeling someone else was in the house with me so I set up the camera just to make sure no one came near my room. In the middle of the night someone approached it from behind and turned it so it faced a blank wall. Then a few minutes later turned it back the way it was before. It tripped the canary and I got a notification on my phone. I saw it and searched the house thoroughly the next morning and never found anything. Needless to say, I slept with my door locked the rest of my time there. I have a home security system with a camera that watches in the living room. I saw my cat and my dog both sitting together in the dog's bed. The cat freaking hates the dog. I think she was possessed. There's is a forbidden love. I worked in a maximum security prison for a while. I was assigned to central control one night, which is where the camera screens were. One of the cameras was for the classifications room. I glanced at it and there was an inmate in there. This was super odd because it was 2 in the morning and nobody was supposed to be in there. Everyone that had keys to that room went home at 5. Anyways, so this inmate is just sitting in there doing nothing. I got the sergeant's attention and told him someone was in there, and gave him the spare key to the room. He went to go check it out with a couple of other people, but by the time they got there, the room was empty. They searched for like 15 minutes but there was definitely no one in there. I used to have an apartment pretty close to my office. The office building was kind of in a business district, but it was also kind of off on its own relative to the city's commercial district footprint. I sold the apartment and before moving into my new home, I left my bicycle chain to the building's bike rack. It was only going to be there for a few days in that no man's land before I was able to move into the new place. Anyway, one day in the middle of the week, I come into the office. Walk past the bike rack and notice that it's completely empty. The building has a bunch of security cameras and one more or less is facing the bike rack since it's adjacent to the front entryway. I sit and watch the security tape with the IT guy. We're watching. See everyone leave the office the night before. See the bike. Keep watching. Then all of a sudden poof. Bike gone. We slowed the tape down and it seemed like when you're watching digital cable or satellite and the image gets scrabbled. Literally it was bike there, then poof gone. In the tape's timestamp it literally happened in one second. I assume my bike got taken to the upside down. This solidifies my belief that sometimes things just straight up disappear. You know, like the book my friend wants back that I borrowed from him, a few months ago, before I moved. I work security. During the weekdays I'm doing parking. 
while weekends I'm at the desk solo. I'll always remember this one Saturday. It was the second shift ever working the weekend and I was watching the cameras when this one guy came to the side door. He looked around inside and just before I could activate the speaker to let him know he was on private property he looked directly at the camera and stared what felt like a minute. When I took my hand away from the button he started to walk away. I ran to the side door to see if I could see where the heck he was walking and he was gone. The only thing that was in that direction was more freaking wall. So to this day whenever I'm watching the cameras, I'm waiting for this guy. This happened a few years before I started working at my current job. The elevators in my building go down to the first and second basement. Late one night, one of our security guards spots a group of people heading into the elevator at level 4. He thinks it's curious because nobody is supposed to be in the building after midnight, so he keeps a close watch on all the lobby cameras to see which floor the group alights at. The doors open at basement 2, but nobody comes out. The second guard scurries down to the elevator doors while the first guard keeps his eye on the cameras to make sure no one has left. When the second guard gets to the basement elevator, he looks puzzled and searches around. He comes back to the guard station to confirm that it's empty, putting the building on lockdown. The two guards spend the rest of the night combing the building together but they were unable to find anyone or anything. They decide to call the police, who review the footage and see the same thing. In the end, the sighting was still unexplained but my workplace decided to stop being cheap and install security cameras in the elevators too. Dang, would have been cool to see the elevator footage of that. Creepy story. I edited together the footage from the security cameras outside Pulse before, during and after the shooting. Though there were many sad and or disturbing things to be seen, the strange one was a wounded man that appeared out of nowhere. He waved his hands for help and he cops came over and carried him to safety. I tried numerous times to rewind to find out where he came from, but he was just there or he wasn't. He didn't crawl to where he had gotten, he just appeared. He looked like he made it out okay. I'm interested in hearing some of your other stories. I used to work at a place which required to be manned 24 hours a day. Reason being is that I handled sensitive documents files and if somebody needed this information in the middle of the night I would have to fetch it for them or confirm that I have it. Anyways, security is kind of tight. Bars on windows, multiple locked doors to get to where I am. They would give me work to do during the night, but underestimated how quickly I could get it done. So like most nights, I finished my work in like 30 to 45 minutes and pulled out my phone and played games Netflix browser edit, since nobody else is in the building at night. So now it is getting to be the last third of my shift when all of a sudden I hear a door close. I look to the security camera and see someone walking down a hall towards my room. At first I thought it was just somebody that came in, ridiculously, early, so I turn around and wait for them to come in. But nobody came in, and the hairs start rising on my back. Now, this isn't a really big building so I figure I'll find the guy wherever he is and start checking offices and storage rooms but come up empty handed. However I do see that a fire door had shut. I go to try and rewind the camera, but the digital recording is password protected and I don't know the password. Anyways the whole thing freaked me out. The way the person was walking down the hallway, like a determined walk right to where I was. So, I sit with my spine tingling for the last couple hours of my shift and finally people start coming in, my replacement shows up and I tell her what I saw and at this point I figured I must have imagined the whole thing. I'm told to go home and the manager and girl who replaced me would look over the camera. After getting home I call my manager and ask what was on the camera. So they said that the video showed the fire door closing but then the video froze for about an hour. The next thing it records is me reopening the door. I used to work as a security officer and was in charge of surveillance dispatch at a theme park. I was once casually watching a camera that was mounted in one of the rides management office and I saw someone pooping in the desk side trash can. I used to work at a college and I had to review 18 hours of security footage once to see who was vandalizing some bulletin boards. It happened sometime between noon on Saturday and 8am on Sunday, so I had to sit there and review the footage. I watched. A half dozen couples fight, a high guy stare at the bulletin board for probably 10 minutes 3pm, a drunk girl in heels fall over and drag her two other friends down with her, they then rolled around laughing their asses off, 9pm, a couple finger banging in the hall 11pm, 
A dude in a chicken costume going for a stroll 3am. Some shady dude in a hood wander around and press his ear to doors 4am. I used to work security at a college dorm and I once witnessed one of the doors on a washing machine slowly open itself and proceed to tear itself clean off of the machine. Told my boss this creepy story and showed him the video and he made me review camera footage for the rest of the night to find out who broke the machine despite the fact that he watched it break itself. Your boss probably thought somebody was fricking with it before and caused it to fall off when you saw it. That's the most likely answer that I can think of. Used to see little crescent shaped light orbs floating around the back dock of a nursing home that I did a little security for when I was young. First time I saw it I thought it was a reflection of a flashlight and that somebody was screwing around behind the building. I jumped up and ran to that door only to find that it was pitch dark and no movement of any kind going on. Only explanation I was ever able to come up with is it had something to do with the electrical panel energizing when the AC units would kick on. Don't know for sure but it made me feel a little better. Also around that time the nurses found a cat that had been deboned, sprawled out on the sidewalk in front of the healthcare entrance. Paws and skull were the only hard bits left. Lem have you HH1 boneless cat. I have cameras on my front and back doors that send video to my phone when they detect movement. I was out of town and woke up to seeing several police officers walking around in my front and backyard. I called my neighbor to find out what had happened and found out that someone had crashed their car through my back fence, which borders the highway. I helped a friend to install a camera inside an elevator. The mall guards had a special drive location for interesting footage. They showed us an elderly couple making out inside an elevator. It wasn't creepy because they were old, but because our sweet Gandpa and Gandma turned into lust beasts as soon as the door closed, and back to sweet just before the door opened again. That elevator has seen a lot of action. Gay, straight and other, but that couple was in the top 10. I used to work part time doing surveillance work for an art gallery. I went in horribly sick one day because I worked on a contract and had to meet a quota for so many hours, otherwise I'd have to make it up elsewhere, which was borderline impossible for me because I only had free time on weekends, when they were closed. So, here I am with a fever and a trash can, dripping sweat and staring at these screens when, all of a sudden, on the lower gallery, I see this black oozing mass creeping across the floor. It just kinda slithered across the brick, up the wall, pulled into a perfect circle in the middle of the room. Then, it stood up into this weird, elongated shadow person with spindly arms and no eyes, looked up at the camera, then very rapidly melted back into the floor and bolted toward the hallway that led to my desk. I screamed bloody murder. Then, I threw up. Also, no, that thing wasn't really there. I was just way sicker than I thought. It was a fever hallucination. My boss came in and sent me home shortly after she came to see if I had died. And I actually still use that weird, gangly thing my brain came up with as a motif in some of my art. Haha. <laughs> People who have appeared on hidden camera TV shows like Impractical Jokers or Punked. What was your experience on the show? When did you figure out you were on TV and what happened when the cameras stopped rolling? was picked as a random participant for some MTV show that was filming in my neighborhood. They said it was a game show. They had me fill out paperwork and made me change my shirt because it had writing on it even though it wasn't for a product or anything. They gave me a plain black t-shirt. I waited around with other participants for a while, like about 45 minutes. A few people left. Finally they came over and directed me to walk over to a specific area down the street. I noticed a big residential style trash can with wheels. We have more standard Oscar the Grouch types here. It seemed out of place and so as I walked I was kinda looking at it. Then a guy popped out of the trash can to scare me. I didn't even react. I just kinda looked at him curiously. At that point a bunch of people came out and someone called Cut. The director seemed to be really pee that I didn't react well enough. They took me aside, gave me $20 and sent me on my way. A friend of mine was on cash cab. The whole thing was fake. They told him he'd be on a reality TV show about food with a hidden camera, but didn't say which one. I got him to sign a bunch of forms and stuff a week in advance and had him stand at a specific place at a specific time. There were TV producers standing around an obvious camera crews waiting. Nobody walking by would possibly think it's a regular cab. Another friend of mine was on The Price is Right. 
The audience members are not randomly selected as they say publicly, they are screened for TV appeal on the way in. That just killed my dream of hoping I catch the cash cab when I visit New York. Well, I kinda accidentally ruined one. I was walking through a mall when a stuffed door to my right flies open and this guy is yelling so who's ready to win 1000 euros in but before he can finish, he slams into me, neither of us saw each other coming. The camera guy had gone to the left, and this host man has turned himself around to look at the family of 5 he was leading through the doors. He got right back up and glared at me, the family meanwhile looking pretty worried. I doubt that made the final cut, but at least I was on camera. Lomfeo he flung a door open and then had the gal to glare at you like you were in the wrong. My wife and I applied for and were accepted to do house hunters but turned it down because it required us to take a week off work to film. The biggest requirement is that you have access to both the place you bought and the place you're moving out of at the same time for filming. So obviously everyone on it already bought their house and are just shown two other random houses by their realtor. A late night show tried to prank my brother one time. He was a PA at the time out getting coffee for crew members. While he was in the coffee shop, they put a fake boot on his company van and said he was parked illegally. He said the guy who approached him was too obvious though, and my brother didn't buy the act at all. He ended up just taking the fake boot off his wheel, handing it back to the guy, and just driving away. Ain't nobody got time for that. Epic crazy boot prank in the hood. Goes wrong. Must see. I was on mystery diners one time. It was supposed to be a hidden camera show about the boss of a restaurant hiring undercover detectives to expose bad business operations. The entirety of the show was fake. The TV show paid the owner of the company to do the show there. The hidden cameras in each corner of the restaurant were massive globes bigger than my head with thick cables running to them. We had to train fake employees. Even the customers for the entire day were fake. I was supposed to be the good employee, I was told to greet a table like I normally would, and act surprised when the customer asked me about a promotion I never heard about. Not in a show but I witnessed one in the making in public while waiting for my dad to arrive from a flight. There was this guy being followed around by a small camera crew holding flowers and talking to the camera acting all excited in the international arrivals area. Through the arrivals door a woman comes out and he runs over to her with cameras in tow and they hug kiss greet etc. After a few minutes of talking to the camera people after they were done, the girl then goes back up to the arrivals door and sneaks back in while it opens for other people arriving. She then immediately comes back through and they do another take of the hug kiss greet thing. Guess they weren't real enough for reality TV the first time? Gotta get those angles bruh. My brother's best friend's family was on Extreme Home Makiova. They filmed Surprise You're Gonna Be On TV scene and the move that bus scene like a crap ton of times till they got the perfect reaction. My dad helped work on the house and he said the camera crew and the hosts were doucher bags who were in the way more than anything. They didn't help, and if they tried they screwed stuff up. I was never found on hidden TV, but a co-worker was caught on to catch a predator in Florida trying to hook up with a supposed 13 to 15 year old female. We live and work in Arizona. He served time, was fired and when his probation was up came back to us to beg for his job back. My employer turned him away. I can't imagine showing my face in a place I worked after such a thing. I had a friend that was on the Carbonero effect, that magic prank show I think it's on Travel Channel. Anyway he said that the entire thing was real and they tricked him. Afterwards he signed paperwork agreeing to be on TV. Carbonero effect cracks me up, I was so hoping it wasn't staged, that dude is really quick witted. Was in Vegas with my wife when we ran into Chris Angel and his crew, before he really became popular, they asked if we wanted to be on the show. We said sure, we had to wait while they filmed another couple, it was a spider appearing from nowhere deal. We watched as Chris distracted the couple as his producer produced the spider from a bag and slipped it in. We turned around and left. Here's my crappy anecdote about how I could be on some guy's internet prank show. I was working at a convention, 
taking a break when I hear someone play fart sounds from their phone. I look around to see where the sounds are coming from and raise my eyebrow at a guy standing nearby. He keeps making the sounds and I occasionally glance over. After a while he walks up to me and tells me that he does a prank show on YouTube and asks for a video release to use footage he shot of me reacting to his fart sounds. I give him permission. I was unable to find the show online when I got home because I forgot his name. So I'm not sure if I ended up on it or not. I wasn't in Impractical Jokers, but they were filming at Universal Studios Orlando a couple of years ago. I didn't watch the show at all and hadn't even heard about it. Some bartenders at the hotel thought I was some dude from the show and when I denied being him, they just gave me a yeah, okay with a wink. My tab that night was on the house. Pretty sure the cute redhead bartender wanted some of my Hollywood seed. So yeah, I'm Brian Q or whatever. My roommate in college was on divorce court when he wasn't ever actually married. His ex seen an ad on Craigslist about getting help with your relationship and she had responded to it. The producers of the show told her to find someone to join her on the show that she has a history with. So she called my roommate and they flew them both from Chicago to LA for free. They both were paid $500 for 2 hours of filming and only had to provide a story and pictures. About 6 months later the episode aired and we still watch it from time to time on YouTube. Easily a top 3 college memory for even myself as I watched all unfold. My grandmother was pranked on just for laughs in Montreal. She took my cousins to the zoo and there was a man disguised as a gorilla. She loved to tell the story but passed away shortly after and I don't think ever saw the footage. One day we had a small get together and had the TV on in the background. Sure enough her episode came on. We all freaked out, mainly me. I still like to look back at the clip from time to time. She also mentioned that it was not fake, complete genuine reaction. I was in one of those real people ads for Chevy. A web one around Comic Con, not a TV one. Felt weird from the start. Figured something was going on when they started talking about a lame superhero named Aluminum Man. Figured I'd play along for the cameras. Revealed it was for Chevy. I was also in a commercial for PayPal where my credit card was taken away in a retail location. Was cast. Accidentally showed a sheet of paper on the day of that listed out what was going to happen. Went in and pretended I had no idea what was going on. This really only applies to the northeast was in one of my regular lunch restaurants while an episode of Phantom Gourmet was being filmed. This is not some big production TV show, and it's not meant to be dramatic. But I was sitting at the bar less than 10 feet from the 3 or 4 guys that were a part of the episode. I've watched the show and they weren't faking anything. They legitimately ordered and ate the food they were reviewing. Spoke to the owner, and asked the pair of ladies next to them their thoughts. I tried not to gawk or interrupt as I knew it would only get cut. It was cool to see that they weren't embellishing, or misrepresenting the establishment. Phantom Gourmet is where it's at. Was on one in Portugal, when I was a tourist there. Basically, an old guy pretending to be disabled and require my help. I helped him, then he pretended to be insane. Felt really bad for not being able to help him. Then after a minute some lady walked up to me and told me it was for a hidden camera show. I just felt bad and used, told her okay and walked away with my friend. Not fun in any way, unprofessional people. That being said, I freaking loved visiting Portugal. My cousin was a producer for Bar Rescue. Apparently it's generally real, no fake waitresses or anything. And all the skeezy stuff they catch actually happens. Like the employees all know there are cameras. And they still act like that. It's crazy. They would have the cameras up for two weeks. The first week everyone wore a lot of makeup and best behavior. After a week they forget about the camera and do their crazy crap you see on the show. He did say that part of him and another guy's job was to rile John Taffet up. They would do multiple takes with him and egg him on until he was yelling. But other than the super obvious product placements they basically let John Taffet do whatever he wanted in the budget. Also, the real bartenders hated training people. These are people on the top of their game trying to teach rank amateurs. He said those were the hardest to film because the fancy bartenders were often terrible people. And the bartenders they were teaching were often well-meaning idiots. Not a fun combo. Those bartenders always seemed like arrogant trash. The creepy smile while they shake a drink makes me cringe. The best thing about these reality shows is that they have perfect lighting. 
perfect sound, like 6 different camera angles in perfect focus and high resolution, and people still believe they are real somehow. Was at a location where they were filming Real Housewives of the Potomac and when off camera the housewives just sat at the bar bored out of their minds playing on their phones until it was their turn to get into an argument. My uncle was filmed on the what would you do something about a lady slipping and falling or faking it and getting the guy to go along with it. I don't really remember the details I just remember it having to do with trying to get you to go along with the scam. He obviously didn't but he had no idea he was being filmed until after when he had to sign something letting him be on TV. But he never ended up getting on cause some lady caused controversy or something and got in the papers over it. WWYD is one of those shows you can either predict right away from the title or one you genuinely don't know about. One I knew what was gonna happen was the teacher hitting on the student. Everyone was gonna call that crap. One I didn't know about was the little girl drawing on the painting. That one was interesting. My mom and I were in an audience that was set up for an impractical jokers thing, and the camera caught us on tape for maybe 5 seconds. I have heard from more people I haven't heard from in years that they saw me, years after the fact, every time it runs. I barely knew what it was when I went and it has turned out to be my claim to fame. I was part of the filming of an episode of Impractical Jokers, the episode where they have the questions booth set up in Times Square. I had never seen the show, nor had anybody I was with at the time. I was in high school and visiting the city with a bunch of classmates and it seemed like something interesting, so I went up and asked the guy, who I later found out to be Murr, a question. He gave me a half smile and then said something like alright okay then and turned away from me. I was confused but brushed it off and walked away. About 3-4 years later, I couldn't fall asleep so I turned on the TV and what happened to be on, Impractical Jokers, which I had never seen before. Not just any episode of Impractical Jokers, that exact episode of Impractical Jokers. It was completely surreal to figure out what was going on. I was almost in disbelief. I remembered there were cameras around. But it was Times Square so it didn't seem out of place at the time and they seemed to be filming something unrelated anyway. I didn't sign a release or anything and they of course never aired my clip. But it was so cool to see it on TV especially not knowing at the time what was going on. I still wonder to this day what the guy said to him in his earpiece that he wasn't willing to say to me. My cousin's friend was on Impractical Jokers. He was sitting on a bench in a park when they came up to start messing with him. He knew who they were but he played him cool and pretended he didn't. Turns out he had been waiting at that bench to sell drugs to someone and they showed up first. XD. My brother was really into going to auctions and I went with him once on a day that some reality show happened to be filming there. It was some show on Spike about a family that travels around going to auctions. I don't really know. They were getting as many people to sign release forms as possible. The family really stuck out because the average auction goer was a hick kind of guy while the family was very clean cut and in suits. I just stood in the background of one of the shots making weird faces the whole time and when my brother came up to me asking for the keys to the car, I put them in my mouth. I have no idea if any of that made it to air. I was on some Michael Carbonaro prank magic show. The setup was a friend of mine invited me for a free workout routine at a local gym. They gave me a sweat guard or heart monitor or something which in hindsight was the mic. Michael started going on about his core focused workout and how it can make you do incredible things. He started lifting himself up by the far end of a pole I was holding. Various other levitation tricks and eventually resorted to rotating his hand about 300 degrees trying to get a reaction out of me but I was just quietly pee confused that this guy was pulling parlor tricks on me when I was waiting for the actual workout to begin. It wasn't until it was over that they told me it was a setup. They looked unamused. Had I known I would have tried to have some fun with it but hey, still got $100. I remember I was at a college party for Thanksgiving. MTV was there filming. I had to sign a bunch of paperwork. Anyways, I was invited to this event by a friend. They never mentioned any filming or what the party was about. So, I got a kid's costume that was a full on turkey costume not thinking much of it. I go to the party. All the other girls are dressed as. Guys dressed in togas and or shirtless. I'm the only one in a normal costume and I wasn't there to drink or dance. Just hang out I thought. 
MTV found it hilarious and kept following me all night and kept egging me on to do things. I don't know if it ever aired or not. Afterwards they gave me a piece of paper and said they'd email me. I never got an email. Really unsure what happened. I knew a girl who was on just for laughs gags, a corny Canadian one, a few years prior and she swore up and down that it was 100% legit. Then again she also appeared in a commercial as a child actress. A little too coincidental. I was on Impractical Jokers when I was really little. My friend's father was the director for the show. I appeared during one of the punishments, the human pinnator punishment. I think they might have cut it out, but I kept trying to hit the guy in the notes, and he was freaking out. As for when I knew I was on camera, it wasn't until a few years later that I realized that I was on TV. I was talking about it with a friend and he was all surprised like girl, really, you were on Impractical Jokers dang I love that show. Overall, great experience 10 stroke 10 for little me. LOL. They didn't cut that, and on their inside jokes version of the show I think they pointed you out as aiming for Mers balls. Not quite a hidden camera show, but I was visiting Orange County Choppers in NY once when American Choppers started filming. I was in the background of the show when it aired. It was the episode where Junior went back to the shop to pick up the Black Widow bike. We were just looking at the bikes when Junior and Vinny walked through the door with camera crew following in front of and behind them. Junior, at the end senior, stayed around and took pics and we had to sign agreements to be on TV. Pretty cool experience. When I was about 10, I was on an unreleased Australian prank show called When I Grow Up. The whole premise of a show was to put kids in funny job situations. For example, I was convinced that I was working in an egg factory. I was stacking eggs into their cartons as they came on a conveyor belt from behind one of those flap doors. The conveyor belt got faster and more eggs came out until finally a chicken popped out of the door, at which point I was freaking out. The reveal happened and all was well. It was kind of obvious looking back, but my mum and the producers were really sneaky. They told me my mum was participating in a focus group. The guy telling me what to do was named Al, and his job was a packer. Al packer. That was pretty funny. I was at a mall where they had set up a fake cell phone kiosk and were trying to fool people who wanted cell phones into these outrageous cell phone packages. I noticed the camera and decided to sit on this bench that was located near the kiosk to see what happens. After about 10 minutes, one of the film crew approached me and offered to give me $50 if I were to move. I guess I was in every shot. I took the money and left. I was in one of those bits you never see on Impractical Jokers because a guy walked up to me and asked to borrow my phone, and I say to him are you already in last mer and the other guys come up and start laughing. I didn't get on TV obviously but they were cool to meet nonetheless. There's a show on ABC called What Would You Do My Family and I had rented a cabin for the weekend in a beautiful part of Kentucky called Red River Gorge. It was way out there. We went zip lining and while we our group were waiting with full gear on. Wondering where in TF our zip guides were, a little girl was loudly worrying about her grandfather's heart problems and about how he shouldn't be ziplining because the doctor said it might kill him due to his bad heart, etc. A few minutes later, the host of the show, John Senanus, busts out of a closet with full camera crew, lights, mics, puts all of these cameras in our faces and asks us questions about the convo this little girl and her grandfather were having. To be honest I felt like we were taken advantage of and it did not sit well with me. Not a great experience. That show is so manipulative and awful. I didn't make it to the episode of Impractical Jokers, but I was on my lunch break in the little park next to the Bowling Green stop in Lower Manhattan. I worked right by there and was eating halal on a bench. Mur walked over to me, with shaved eyebrows. I immediately knew who he was, said so. Gag wouldn't be funny if I go along with it and act like I don't know him, and snapped a pic with him. Super nice guy. I'm guessing the other three were hidden and feeding him lines cause they weren't in sight. People who watch security cameras for a living. What creepy things have you tried to forget? Years ago I worked overnight at a homeless shelter for men. A good portion of the regular guys that stayed they had mental health and or drug problems. There were a lot of fights and the occasional stabbing, but for the most part everyone was relatively behaved and most were good people at heart. I received a lot of threats, but one ever acted on them. 
One night when I arrived for my shift I noticed there was a much larger police presence than usual. I walked into our office and the officer in charge started asking me if I had noticed a guy, Richard, behaving unusually at all lately. I had not saw anything out of the ordinary and I told them such. I looked at the dorm list and noted that he was marked as no longer staying at the shelter. He was a long term resident so I thought this was odd. The police left without telling me anything except the fact they needed security footage from two specific cameras from the night before. I did not work the night before and the guy I normally work with pulled a no-show. We were the only two people besides the manager, who was on a holiday, that were trained on how to burn footage to a DVD. I spent the rest of my shift in shock. When I found the footage they were looking for I felt physically ill. Richard had gone out onto the second floor smoking deck, finished a cigarette, got up on the railing, and dove head first onto the cement below. The first camera on the second floor showed him jump, but the second camera on the first floor was much more gruesome. He landed head first and rolled over in a way that he was staring right into the camera as he lay there dying. I quickly put the footage on DVD and went to throw up. I was given the next day off. No counseling. No nothing. I will never forget that one. He was a pretty good dude as far as I knew him. Some mental issues. But no one knew he was suicidal or why he did it. A year back I was working at a hostel and we have security cameras throughout the building. Watching the footage from the camera in the kitchen. It is about 2am and a very drunk guest walks in. Grabs some snacks. And accidentally drops an empty bottle on the ground. He then proceeds to kick it up into the air then kick it again in air, where it flies across the entire length of the room perfectly into the recycling bin. In his drunken state he threw up his hands, ran around in a circle clearly in shock at how amazing he is. Then after looking around he noticed there was no one there to see it. After that he looked visibly depressed and stumbled back out of the kitchen. I hope you went up to him the next day and said I saw what you did last night. Working in a rehearsal studio for bands we had camera at the front desk that pointed down the hall with the entrances to all the rooms. One day I'm sitting there minding my own business and noticed there was a girl sitting in the hallway outside one of the studios. She had come in with the band that was practicing and I just assumed she didn't feel like sitting in the loud space with the band. So I got up and went to tell her she was welcome to sit in the lobby where there was a couch and TV. I got around the corner and she wasn't there. I went back the desk and there she was, sitting in the hall waiting outside the room. So I went back out to find her not there again. I assumed she had gone into the room so I went and knocked and they informed me that the girl had left a while before, just after they had gotten started practicing. So I went back and there she was, still on the camera. It was only then that I realized I had accidentally bumped the freeze frame button for the monitor. That killer ending. I thought it was a bogus post until then. I used to do asset protection for a Walmart in a very H addicted area. The creepiest thing was seeing how fast someone would go from completely normal to absolutely out of it in the span of a year because of the drug. You could build a timeline of their demise through CCTV pictures and video. One man in particular really stood out to me. The first time I apprehended him he was very polite and intelligent. Just stealing to get his fix. A year later and the fourth time I caught him he was basically a shell of a man. He tried running from me and I looked him right in the eyes and said I know you. Gary last name. Please don't run. The look on his face of someone knowing him who he couldn't even remember will always stay with me. I investigated internal loss for target and one time. As I was walking a lady. Who stole thousands of dollars worth of stuff. Out in handcuffs with the police, she turned to me and said, Thanks for being so nice to me. I will never forget that. <laughs> Not necessarily creepy, but I work on security for a popular UK supermarket and came into work one day to find a note asking me to burn an incident off the cameras onto disc. It was something from the car park he previous night, so I figured we'd had a shoplifter in or an accident in the car park, but no. It wasn't anything as pleasant as that. We'd had a situation where a couple, older white gentleman and youngish Asian female, had been in store and the night security guy just thought they were acting a bit funny. So he follows them round store on CCTV in store to see if anything went on. Nothing really happens during this time, though the guy seems to become more and more aggravated. They go outside having purchased their shopping to pack it into the car boot, when a clear argument occurs between them. He suddenly turns round, 
kicks the empty trolley across the car park and then smacks her full force in the face out of seemingly nowhere. She recoils in pain. A bit more shouting takes place but she seems to dutifully take her seat in the passenger's seat despite what just took place. During the process of burning this to disc for the police, since our security guy had called it in as an assault, I had to rewatch the moment where he hits her over and over again. But watch helplessly as she seems to calmly get into the car of the man who just assaulted her. Long story short, she was a mail order bride who was trafficked here and as well as assault and he got done for people trafficking. So a pretty wholesome ending to an otherwise awful story. It's kind of fricked up that mail order brides have been like. A standard punchline to sitcom jokes that I've heard since I was a kid and it never clicked for me until now that it was a form of human trafficking and a real thing. I always assumed it was either some kind of scam or a girlfriend in Canada kind of thing. When I worked as a security officer it was my first week on the job I watched my boss and another officer try to talk a guy off of the top of our parking structure. Didn't work watched him jump off and land next to an employee who was coming in for her shift. Guy hit the ground so hard it exploded the belt right off of his pants. I will never forget watching that. Jesus Christ. The belt thing is graphic f. That's unreal. What a horrible thing to witness. I'm not in security but I work for a bank and part of my job is checking the cameras in the morning for pings overnight. And then making sure all the pings were just squirrels or leaves etc. Last week I saw a ping on our back entrance camera and when I went to watch the video, it was a guy I didn't recognize walking back and forth in front of the door at 3am for a solid 20 minutes. Like just pacing the whole time. And every couple minutes he'd stop and walk up to the door and stare into the camera. Then he'd go back to pacing. A car eventually went by and that must have set something in him off because he legit ran away and didn't come back. We ended up calling the cops about it but I still have no idea who he was or what his deal was. He was probably gonna try and rob it. But when he got there had an internal conflict. I've heard stories of that happening before. Was watching CCTV footage of a parking deck. And on the 9th level there's this guy sitting in the middle of the deck. Banging his head on one of the pillars. All of a sudden the guy just stops. And runs to the edge. Without stopping or jumping. He flings himself over the edge. I immediately called dispatch and told them what had happened. Few days later I was offered counseling for those events. I'm glad you were. A lad I grew up with worked security at a large shopping mall. Security get radioed to a jumper. He is first on scene. Blood everywhere. Body in a complete state. After emergency services left the scene. They washed down the bus access road and he was ordered back to work. He wasn't offered counseling or a day off to gather his thoughts. I hope you're doing better now. Mostly lots of freaking. I've had to turn on the microphone and tell them to stop it or they'll be thrown out. Of the college gym. I'd have just started narrating. Worked as a harbor master a while ago. Had to check the marina's cameras after a boat was abandoned at our docks. I was looking for the owner. I looked on the tape from the boat's first night in the marina. The man who had sailed the boat in was standing on the end of his boat for 2 hours, barely moving. Then at 1.30am he just walked off the back and dropped into the water. He never came back up. Never found his body. Freaky. Capital S. If this were on an Arlep, it would be called I was a harbor master a while ago. And I saw something weird on the security cameras. Part 13. I work in a retail store. And for a while I worked security here. Watching the security cameras wasn't technically my job, but we were consistently short-handed in that department and the manager was grooming me for promotion. So I got to fill in and watch the cameras occasionally. One day when we were reviewing footage from overnights, we saw this teenager calmly set down his shopping basket, take off his hat and glasses, and just charge at a wall. Hit it head on. He did this two more times. When he was done, his face was a bloody mess. And he put his hat and glasses back on and just left. Weirded me right the heck out. Someone needs to explain this. I used to do IT support for a company that had a lot of heavy machinery moving around inside a big warehouse type area. This giant front end loader would scoop up material and dump it into a hopper. Along the sides of the floor were these huge concrete barriers. I've heard them called Jersey barriers and mafia blocks. But they are about 10 feet tall. 
and this one guy's life was ended when the front end loader inadvertently scooped the base of the barrier and landed on one of two guys walking shoulder to shoulder through the plant. I was tasked to review the footage, then make copies, six of them, to be exact, and then ensure that the footage worked and was self-executable and able to be run from a USB stick. So I had to watch the footage of this guy get killed over a dozen times. I, too, was offered counseling for just watching the video. I used to work IT at a university, and last Easter we had a break in. We found the footage of the guy going in at 2pm, leaving at around 3, and not really taking anything. Fast forward to 7pm and the guy comes back in and is walking around the auditorium till 6am the next morning. In that time he proceeded to strip into his underwear, steal and wear a mask the Japanese exchange students made for the teacher, and smoke a crap ton. He managed to steal 6 full bags of random items. We've dubbed him as a jack off bandit. Missed your chance at calling him the hijacker. I used to work loss prevention for a big box store. We had a lady get arrested for public indecency and I was asked to investigate. I had to follow her backwards from the point of arrest and it was a trip to say the least. She arrived at the store swerving and nearly hitting several cars. She entered the store with two young children, both of whom are mentally handicapped. That lady literally dragged those kids around the store, slapping them and tugging at their ears collars if they didn't obey. At some point she just abandons them in the clothing section, walks through the back doors, to the break area. And I'm assuming she thought it was the bathroom because she proceeds to pull down her pants and shoots all over the fire exit door. She pulls her pants up, without wiping mind you, and goes back to the floor like, nothing happened. Someone saw what she did and followed her. Luckily there's an officer in the store at the time and quickly approaches her when the associate tells him what she did. Needless to say, she was definitely high and or drunk and was arrested. The scary part is... She did not mention those kids not one time. It wasn't until I reviewed the tape that I saw they were just still waiting by the shopping cart completely oblivious and afraid to move. Child services was later called and I still think about those kids often. Breaks my heart to think about the bulls those kids must still be going through. Comma big box store. For some reason. Even though you didn't mention the store. The entire time I was reading this I was imagining a Walmart. I do not envy LP people that have to check the security cameras at Walmart because I feel like this isn't the worst kind of stuff they could see. But wasn't a security officer, but I worked at a 24 stroke 7 gas station for a while. One night my co-worker accidentally killed himself while at work, and I made the mistake of watching the footage. He went to the back of the store with a bag of drugs, probably C snorted it and started acting funny for about 10 minutes. He then sits in the back office and gets fidgety thrashing around until finally he just goes limp in the chair. He had died of a heart attack and sat there for 5 hours before anybody came in, thought the absence of an employee was strange, and called the cops. It was really weird seeing people come in and act all pissy for the lack of service. They'd just leave thinking someone was lazy, but nah, dude was dead. As someone who used to work at an all night convenience store, I used to hang out in the back all the time, and there were definitely times I missed people on the cameras waiting for me to come sell them cigarettes. I always came out eventually, but still, it's understandable for folks to assume someone's just being lazy. I was working a pub in Sydney and watching the CCTV when I saw the guy continually cross and uncross his legs while playing a poker slot machine. After a few minutes he walked to a corner of the room, took a crap and proceeded to go back to playing his machine. Talk about being addicted. To answer some of your questions, this kind of thing is not rare. Mostly it's people pee themselves. These machines are evil and designed to get people addicted and that results in some people not being able to pull themselves away, even to use a bathroom. Finally, thank god I'm a manager, but telling someone it was their job sucked. I used to work at a casino and had to clean crap out from in between two machines. Never saw the video but whoever it was had to have scooped that crap out with their hand to smear it between the machines. Had another guy spell out frick, casino name, in their own fesses on the bathroom wall. So glad I called in that day. Not a CCTV operator but I was chummy with the security guards I used to work with. 
It was in a large three-story retail building in a city center and we had all sorts of folks coming in and out. We had a Phantom W and Phantom Shitter who would leave their bodily fluids in random places. There were known as Jack the Shitter and Wonksy and it turned out to be the same guy. He was clever and knew where all the security camera were. He'd case the joint. The only reason he got busted was because they were moved. By far the funniest thing I saw was a guy being chased into the building on the second floor by the police. He ran around the shop for about 5 minutes while being chased by police and our security guards. It was great watching it on different screens as he moved through the building. Anyway he got to ground floor and underestimated the drop onto the escalator and broke his leg and the escalator him brought back up to the feet of the security guards who were chasing him. It was brilliant. I used to do IT support for a charity that supplied housing and support for homeless people. A large proportion also had mental health issues, so there were a fair amount of interesting events that happened. Being an IT, I avoided experiencing most of it firsthand, though I was threatened with being stabbed on about my third day. Anyway, I come in one Monday, and there's an email labeled urgent, saying there was an incident at the stairwell of one of the properties on Sunday night. And could I pull the relevant CCTV footage and put it on a DVD? I had to do this fairly frequently. I skip through the footage, find the incident, usually a fight or blatant drug dealing, and burn it to DVD for the police. The email never mentioned what the incident was, so I skip through the footage, and watch as a clearly very agitated man ties a rope around a stair rail at the top of the stairs, then his neck, looks over the rail and then just casually tips forward over it. The rope flipped him round, and he dangled there twitching for far too long, before he just stopped. So yeah, that was a fun Monday. They really should have warned you. That's a heck of a thing to just expect someone to watch and record. I had a job reviewing hidden tape footage looking for people sabotaging sabotaging food product in a factory. The entire idea was creepy on one level. They made pasta. They were finding things like glass, screws staples and crap in the product thankfully none of it made it out of the plant they had metal detectors at the end of the line because it's common for things like metal shavings to get in the product given the machines so they want to catch that and stop the product but machines went off and they'd inspect the product to find ridiculous crap that there is no way could have made it in unless someone put it there that's creepy because think about how possible terrible it would have been had that product ever made it to the public you aren't paying attention you throw your shells in the pot, boil them along with a nail, then feed that crap to your kids who just jumped down. Thank god for the fail safes. Anyways, they need to catch whoever is doing it. They install the cameras in the areas where most of the affected product is made and packaged. They record it all. Then they hire me to go through the tapes on high speed, looking for alarms going off on the machines or anything weird. So I see a ton of stuff that's notable. Some of it funny. Some of it cruel, some of it just plain terrible. Eventually I do figure out who the saboteur was. But the creepiest thing was this guy driving a forklift around with his kid not only on the forklift with him, but hanging out of the sides of it waving at people. It's creepy cause at some point not long after that, the guy killed his kid somehow in a forklift accident. Thank frick the accident wasn't on tape or at least my tapes. Kid never should have been allowed even in the plant. Certainly not on the fricking forklift. And this guy killed his kid. So it was like I was watching a ghost. And I kept wishing I'd had those tapes to review a week or whatever earlier. Cause as soon as I would have said something they would have disciplined the dude. And maybe saved the kid. I reviewed the security cameras around my office building. The cameras only monitor the outside of the building. We have signs posted everywhere stating cameras are watching. You get accustomed to certain movement patterns and activation of cameras. So I don't have to review the whole day's activity, just the parts that show things out of the ordinary. For a while, homeless people were using an behind landscaping to kick back and smoke drugs. Herb, heroin off foil, glass M pipes, you name it. It's all in full view of one of the cameras. Watched a few drug sales there too. However, the most disturbing by far was the freaking. Basically, guys would take the homeless women to that area and do any number of weird and wonderful things. The weirdest of all was when some dude lay on the ground and a drug slinging homeless woman sat on a bench looking at her phone. He slipped off her flip flop and started sucking off her toes. He took short breaks intermittently to hit a glass M pipe 
then went back to work on the toes. This went on for about 45 minutes, then they left. We systematically found almost all the homeless peace stars during the day and told them our place is cameras and not to come back. Things have been quiet for a few years now. However, the most disturbing by far was the freaking. Basically, guys would take the homeless women to that area and do any number of weird and wonderful things. Me, internally, I bet it's foot fetish crap. He slipped off her flip flop and started sucking off her toes. Freaking knew it. To those of you who are responsible for scrubbing through security footage, what's the weirdest, funniest, oddest, creepiest, or most interesting thing you've caught someone doing on camera? I work as a busser at a pretty nice sushi restaurant. We used to have another worker who was referred to as shithead busser by the rest of the staff. Anyway, one day shithead busser arrives at work and sees someone trying to break into a car. He proceeds to break the window for them, then put on his apron and go into work. The whole thing is on video surveillance. He lost his job. I worked surveillance for a casino for a few years. I've seen people having sex in vehicles. An unbelievable amount of people that sift through cigarette butts and smoke any that have anything left. More saps than I knew existed. People lose. All the time. Win. Hardly ever. Exorbitant amounts of money. One of the strangest was a woman being escorted out by friends. Seemingly outrageously drunk. It was summer so they put her in the car. Presumably to pass out. While they continued to gamble. She left the car. Rifled through four other cars taking leaving things along her journey. And then left when someone came and picked her up. Police were involved. The lady was found within a few days. Turns out that she had been to the doctor, had been prescribed a medication and completely blacked out from it. No alcohol was consumed and she had no recollection of 3 days that had passed. When confronted she burst into tears and immediately offered to pay for whatever she took. I didn't see it but I was working when it happened. I see our security guy running through the back hallway at our grocery store. I ask if he needs help and he replies only if you wanna see an old man jacking off in the frozen food aisle. I used to be a claims adjuster for mostly slip and fall cases I was reviewing a tape of an alleged slip and fall at a grocery store. The woman walked into the middle of an aisle, picked up a wet floor sign and hid it in another aisle. She then screamed loudly, no audio on tape though, and then waited a few seconds before lying on the ground. When someone came to help her, she dramatically kicked her legs, causing her body to rotate around in a circle like a child throwing a hissy fit. Then her accomplice came over to help her and dramatically pretended to slip all over the place like a cartoon character I wish I had a copy of that to give to the internets. I am responsible for watching the CCTV at one of Australia's largest airports. People do amazing things. I once watched a man drop his pants and take a crap at a packed baggage carousel, to the disgust of everyone standing around him. People always walk into glass doors. I watched a woman nose dive down a 12 step set of stairs, completely missed every stair and face planted at the bottom. This guy thought he was by himself one day in a empty part of the airport. He began to strip down to his bare ass and slide across the leather chairs completely nude. I love watching people when they think they are alone. Last time I go naked chair surfing in Australia. I used to manage a cell phone store and a pee off customer went to storm out of the store. But an extremely clean window impeded his exit. He slammed into it. Face first. Turned around. Shook his fist like an old man and left. And we must have watched it 200 times. Even our regional VP couldn't help but laugh. CCTV of the drive through lane at McDonald's. A guy stuck naked at 2am doing press ups. Best part? He was a member of staff and had called in sick earlier that evening. He was supposed to be working there and then. Drugs do amazing things. Used to work at a smoothie shop similar to Jamba Juice but with more supplements. Make this guy a 9 freaking dollar smoothie with wheatgrass, oats, protein power and weight gainer. Ridiculous but whatever. He pays and turns to leave with his phone in his hand. Have a nice day. The next person to come in says there's something all over the window. It's the mega calorie deluxe I just made. Go back to check the security cam. This dude walked right into the window next to the door, 
smashed his smoothie, turned to see if anyone saw then just booked it. We watched it over and over every day for a week and it never got old. It was a big controversy when we found out someone deleted the video. Never saw bro health nut again. I told her light on the freaking wheat grass. Splash. My dad works in a big supermarket, and he used to leave me with the guy who's responsible for the safety there. One time he showed me a video of an old man taking a dump in the fitting room. The look on the 12 year old boy who was the unfortunate next one in line for the fitting room was priceless. I worked at a burglar alarm place, at about 2.30 am. A couple of hispanic guys broke into a mexican taqueria, and began making themselves tacos. Police responded in 13 minutes, the owners showed up a few minutes later. The guys didn't speak any english and the cops didn't speak spanish. They kept saying trabajo which means work or job, and I knew that much to translate for the cops. The owner said don't arrest them until I get down there, I might know who it is. By the time the owner showed up, the guy had made tacos for the cops and his buddy. The owner, having to show up at 3am, was a bit weirded out but he ate one too. Finally he calls in and says I don't know these guys. This is my wife's restaurant and she doesn't know them either. I offered this guy a job though. Those tacos were good. Their plan succeeded. A good taco is a great legal defense. When I was 16 and working at a fast food place, one of my managers had all of her shifts covered for two weeks. I figured she got pretty sick or had a death in her family. The next day I walked into the office to see our area manager and regional manager watching security footage. So I walked up behind them to see what it was. It was our manager getting beaten savagely by her crazy rided up boyfriend. He dragged her from the office out to the back car park by her hair, before slamming her head in the door of his car. After a worker at our store stopped him from abducting her, I walked out of the office, and never said a word. I was laughing at all the stories until now, crap, that's awful. Our staff had someone make a lunch run to Wendy's. One of the girls was stuck on a phone call, so they put her sandwich in the break room refrigerator. About a half hour later, she walks into the break room, takes the bag out of the refrigerator, throws the entire bag into the microwave, and hits the start button, forgetting that Wendy's wraps their burgers in foil. The foil starts sparking, which sets the bag on fire. She rips open the door to the microwave, grabs the bag, and can't decide what to do with it. She runs three entire laps around the break room while shrieking and juggling a paper bag that has three foot flames shooting out of the top. She finally has the presence of mind to throw it into the sink and run water over it. Once word got out, we had people coming into the control room all day to see the footage. TL. DR receptionist sets lunch bag on fire in microwave. Decides to run around the room with it. Joe McCarthy. Richard Nixon. Stuart Baker. Television. North Korea. South Korea. Marilyn Monroe. Receptionist started the fire. It wasn't really security but it was CCTV for the flight deck of an aircraft carrier. I saw some guy jacking it in the middle of the flight deck just standing there whipping it out about midnight. I'm not sure if he needed to do it to keep awake or if he was turned on by the oil atolls and stars. I have a new dream in life. That's the most goddamn American thing I've ever heard. I worked at a water park one summer and at the turnstiles when you come in you had to have your bag checked by security before you could come in and pay, so this one Indian family of about 15 kids, 2 grandparents and 9 adults, helps the elderly in first, and then one of the parents gets their bag checked as a distraction while the entire rest of the family rushes the gates. On camera you see all of the kids and adults running past the security guard with lawn chairs, bags, towels, and an umbrella. They then thought it was smart to split up. By then I came out of the security office and saw half of them running into our wave pool, still fully clothed, shoes and all, and the other half trying to make a break for the picnic area. TL. DR. Indian family rushes the security gates at a local water park. For my first job, I worked at a small, local gas station. One Tuesday afternoon, a large, bald man came into the store and bought us out of Rice Krispies treats. Then, he proceeded to go to his car, put on a large fur coat, come back into the store, go into the big beer fridge in the back, and build a large castle out of the treats. He hid inside and refused to leave at closing. 
The footage was used a few years later to allow him to plead insanity in another case. The long con. Alright, my time to shine. I was a security guard at a large retail chain for a few years, and I saw some things. But one of the worst was this one guy. I saw him coming into the store multiple days in a row, never buying anything, never really leaving with anything. So I started to wonder what the heck he was doing. I began to follow him on camera and the first couple times I followed him, there was nothing special. Then one day, it all made sense. I saw him come into the store and immediately went to the security office to track him. I followed him to the toys section where he slowly walked up to this old lady, 65-70 years old, kind of fat, and he knelt down behind her, took his camera phone and stuck it under her dress and took a picture. I called the cops who came and arrested him and found many more pictures on his phone. But man, I just felt bad for that lady. She didn't even know what had happened until we told her. My substitute teacher in high school worked at Ontario Place as a security guard and watched a swan break a burglar's leg and attack him as he tried to escape. Oh Canada. There's two. Both are of the same co-worker. This was on our old analog DVR. The first is of our co-worker cleaning out one of the work fridges. He found a jug of milk that had expired. He brings it to the counter near the sink and goes to open it. At this point you can clearly see the jug is swelled so much that there is no space left between the handle and the main part. Now he hesitates before opening the jug. He puts it in the sink. It's clearly a bit of a struggle to get the cap off. Then it comes free and a fountain of rotten milk gushes up. All over him. His face. His shirt. The entire kitchen. Poor bastard. The next was a simple nut shot when he was trying to pry the lid off a container. Not complicated, but facing the camera and in full view. Tragically both clips were lost when that DVR died as we were trying to burn the clips to disc. Alas, alas. This is more about my story on camera. My manager, who runs the restaurant I work at, accidentally left his notebook at the bar and my co-worker looked at it, with an astonished look on her face. She explained to me that the manager watches us on the camera and any time we do something against the rules he would write it down. Catches, he shouldn't have had access to any of the cameras. I was fairly new to the business so my name was only in there once. Stubble, 10.35am, drinks glass of milk. We were pee that he was wasting time and invading our privacy concerning himself with petty little rules. So the next day at 10.35 I poured myself a glass of milk. Had a seat at the bar, stared into the camera, drank it, and then flipped off the camera. I knew it would horribly pee him off, but he couldn't fire me for doing it because he'd have to go the big boss and tell him that he was wasting his own time accessing footage he should have never seen. TL. DR. I drank a rebellious glass of milk and gave the camera the finger. I bet that milk tasted like justice. I work on a hospital unit that has a large amount of security cameras. One day, myself along with at least 4 other staff members witnessed one of our nurses walk off the unit, over to our meal cart, full of eaten trays, and proceed to eat from the scraps. She was stuffing food into her mouth, and her pockets. Later on, she was complaining about not having eaten anything all day. I haven't got my hands on the footage yet, but a friend of the family owns a jewelry shop. The guy's wife is tending it while he is in the back sorting out stock. Robber walks in starts waving a gun around. Husband, without giving a single frick, jumps off of the stock room to defend his wife and his shop and lands a knockout punch. He towers over almost everyone. The rest of the footage is a half hour reel of the robber waking up and getting knocked out by the husband, repeatedly, again and again, until the police arrive. I would pay more money to see this than I paid to see Transformers. I remember a similar thread a few months ago where someone was a security guard for a building and would go patrol the perimeter watch tapes. He said that he went out walking and when he got back to his post he noticed someone in an area he had just walked through and wound the tape back. The man was lurking near him the whole time he was in that area following him from a distance and just watching. I haven't found anything really creepy or disgusting, but I saw one of our elderly housekeeping staff do the Dougie for like 2 minutes once. Probably against some kind of policy, but I clip like 30 seconds from it and set it to the music. Right proper. You must provide proof. Probably when our, 
no X. Employee decided to fall through our tenant's ceiling James Bond style when he was trying to break in to steal narcotics from their locked sharps cabinet. A camera was motion activated. So all I saw was our employee falling 9 feet to the concrete floor. The successive thump and then watching him get up after 10 minutes and cleaning up the mess he made. Almost makes me miss that dumb bars from time to time. Until I remember that he tried to steal controlled substances from our tenant and almost nixed our contract with them. Frick that guy. I work at a grocery store and we have a video of this one manager going to pick up what he assumed was a chocolate bar turned out to be a turd in the middle of the sales floor. When looking farther back we find a video of an old guy slowly bends down shakes his pants and lets the turd roll onto the floor and walks away. The store director then looked up his membership card found his address and sent him a coupon for free box of depends. That's a classy way to say we know you crap your pants. I work at a gym, and we had a recording of an individual doing standing side lateral raises. On the 6-7th rep this individual went down too quickly and slammed his dong in between the dumbbells. The moment he struck his dong he immediately fell. After a few seconds he wakes up and walks over to the counter. Pants covered in blood. Needless to say the ambulance was called, and we had watched that video at least 100 times. Sadly it was deleted. My penis has retracted in horror. There there. Johnson. Everything is fine. I once watched a client. Mental health. Write out what he wanted served as options for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. In his own poo. This lasted around 20 minutes and was not his first poo manifesto. I guess this guy really does have a crap list. I was the general manager of a restaurant with security cameras. One day I was in my office watching the cameras when I see a human body out of nowhere eat it face first onto the concrete in our loading bay. Fell from off screen. Landed in camera view. The body didn't move for a good 5 seconds and I booked it out back to make sure whoever it was wasn't dead. When I got out back I discovered it was one of my cooks who was now waking from his stupor. He had been smoking a cigarette leaning against a wall. Fainted, and annihilated his teeth on the asphalt. Nothing was left of his mouth except jagged spikes and gaps. I'd conservatively say 10 teeth lost. I only found 3 whole ones. He had no memory of the fall and we assumed he had momentarily asphyxiated. Exhaustion and dehydration and smoking and standing equals faint. His nickname from that day forward was Jaws. I worked in the security department of a hotel for a few months. Best thing I've seen on camera. A drunk couple come to the front desk at around midnight and asks the front desk clerk for a room. He declines, as our hotel policy doesn't allow us to take walk-in rooms after 9pm. The guy stands there for 15 minutes arguing with him, trying to get him to change his mind, but to no avail. Finally, the lady has had enough, charges forward and yells out, maybe this will convince you and lifts up her shirt and full on flashes the front desk employee, no bruh, just huge, fake boobs, they still weren't able to get a room for the night. Funniest, a mentally challenged male stood in front of the video camera, when he realized he could see himself on the screen above him, he started checking himself out, he lifted up his shirt to see his extremely large belly, he made a disappointed face and sucked in his stomach, his face changed from disappointed to proud, it was an adorable moment really. Cartons of cigarettes kept coming up missing from the store I work at. They are kept behind the counter so all signs pointed towards it being an employee. My boss watched all surveillance tapes from days they went missing and after weeks of not finding anything realized a teenage boy would army crawl around the counter while his friend directed the cashier's attention away. It was so sly and well planned. They probably stole over 20 cartons before they were caught. But they were caught. Dang hooligans. I had a job reviewing hidden footage of a pasta production line as a teenager. I watched hours and hours of black and white video at 8x speed trying to identify a person sabotaging the product. Many interesting things were witnessed. The funniest, a midget Italian mechanic who had a classic stereotypical mustache worked in the plant. In one video he was servicing a machine. And one of the big old Italian ladies who worked the machine sneaks up behind him with one of the giant cardboard boxes they packed the pasta in. You can see the other ladies watching her and trying to hold back their laughter. Of course she drops the box on top of him and then holds it down. 
There was no sound but you can see all the women laughing like crazy while the first woman holds the box down. You could actually see the sides of the box moving as he struggled inside. They left him in the box for a while. I think it was a few minutes and when he finally was let out the first thing he did was try to slap the woman who had put the box over him. He actually ran up to her and jumped and swung his hand fist and she just stepped away and laughed more. Then he proceeded to run around the room jumping and trying to slap all the woman and completely failing repeatedly. I swear he looked so damned much like Super Mario without the mushroom. I still laugh when I think about it. This was years ago. When I worked in retail I had a job where the whole team just got on great. Gelled very well. My manager was super easy going and always had a laugh with the staff. One day he had bought a pellet gun BB gun and come into the back room and shot me in the leg while also trying to avoid the camera which was just above the door to the back room. This was all in good fun and watching me wail and flap like a chicken in the wind trying to avoid the pellet provided hours of enjoyment for the staff. I had requested the weekend off one time and was swiftly told no despite being told I could a few weeks prior. I don't know what possessed me to check it, probably a quiet day and was having lunch. So I decided to just look through the video to watch it and have a laugh at myself when I noticed at the very bottom of the screen my boss shooting me with the BB gun. It was just his head and the gun pointing at me, but you could tell it was him. We all knew this was a plastic piece of crap but the camera makes it look like some serious badass gun. I took a screenshot and circled him in the picture and left it in the office. I got the weekend off. His reaction will be burned into my mind forever. It's all fun and games until you get in between a man and his vacation. Worked in the surveillance department. Old dirty men copping feels on local sea kids for a few dollars. People dealing drugs. Getting beat up. Handies. Yada yada. Funniest one was when a few of the cleaning staff were huffing cans of air duster and took turns passing out in the cleaning supply closet. Like 4 or 5 times each. Then one went into a seizure and the other one tried stuffing him back into the closet. When I was 18, I was an assistant manager at a record store in a mall. One night, a guy carrying a shopping bag went through the sensors and set it off. I told the other employee to stay behind the counter. I asked the customer to stop, and he didn't. Our store was near an exit and as soon as he hit the door, he ran. I chased after the guy while I speed dialed mall security and told them where I was and described who I was chasing. I ran after him until the bag broke and the merch spilled. The guy sprinted over a hill when security got there and I just took the bag. Unfortunately, the guy wasn't caught, but I recovered almost $500 of merch. Later that night, a friend from an anchor store who worked security asked, would you like to see the tape? It was cool to see myself. A 5 feet 3 tall girl 130 pounds. Chasing her a 6 feet 4 inches 225 pounds. Dude. I also had a Batman shirt on. And was referred to as Batgirl after that. Till there are 18 year old assistant managers out there. At 18 I could barely make it to school on time by myself. I used to work security in a large shopping center in Southern California. The memorable videos I have seen or found. A girl walking down the center of the mall, head down and texting, walk right into a rolled sign that was laying on the ground and fall face first. A mall security employee showing off for a hot chick at a store by patting down and searching a guest in the mall completely illegally, and managed to not get fired. Our boss was too nice to people. A seagull land in front of an external camera look right into the camera and peck at it several times. A woman walk into a clear glass pane right next to a sliding glass door. A rabbit commits suicide by jumping from the second floor down to the first, then watched it hop a few times and die from the impact a few seconds later. A guy attack a Macy's LP agent, and our security personnel help tackle the dude, and pepper spray him. An off-duty LA company, Sheriff Sergeant. Get arrested by loss prevention agents for using his minor daughters to assist him in shoplifting from a high-end retailer. People getting pretty badly injured on escalators either by getting limbs stuck, shoes stuck, falling down them, falling up them, wheelchairs getting stuck, guy with Parkinson's freeze up and fall over at the bottom. Two off-duty cops get into a fight in the middle of the street, after one accuse the other one of bumping him with his car. Several vehicle hit and runs. Lots of police arresting people for various reasons. 
few acts of vandalism to buildings, or vehicles, various fights inside of the mall between people, ugh, I've seen some crap man. A friend had a DUI case coupled with a fleeing which is kind of boring. He gets the dashcam video, watches it, and we hear him losing his crap down the hall and brings everyone in to watch it. You see the white sedan pull over, in a sketchy area, and the driver immediately bails to the left with cop chasing off camera. About a minute later this humongous woman wearing booty shorts and a tank top walks into the middle of the street and a guy walks up to her where they proceeded to kiss passionately for about 2 minutes. They slowly amble off in different directions and 2 minutes later a dude comes out of nowhere at full tilt and leaps in the car and peels off, stealing DUI guy's car. Two other cruisers show up and see the cruiser but no car. They ended up finding it in Atlanta almost a month later. Every job I've had has been night shift. It's just simpler and there's nobody you have to suck up to when it's just yourself. A few of them have been as security and the one I have now is as a night auditor for a major hotel chain. One of my security jobs was at a hospital and I had to go out and confront a kid that was 13 because he was jacking off in the ER. Waiting room at about 2am. The saddest thing so far though happened where I work now. There was a boys southern baptist high school basketball team staying at the hotel and around 1am I noticed two of them on the camera duck into the fitness room. Walked down there and found them all over each other and as soon as they saw me they burst into tears begging me not to say anything because they would get kicked out of school and disowned by their parents. They were actually shaking. I told them not to worry. That I won't say anything cause I also happen to be gay. Gave them a key for a room housekeeping hadn't made it to that day and told them they had an hour. What can I say lol I'm a big softy. AWH bless your gay gay heart. Aside from seeing people fall off the treadmill or people lifting too much and either breaking a bone or messing up their muscles. The wildest thing I've seen at my gym was overnight when the gym is not staffed but the it is still accessible. When a HS girl comes out of the women's locker room in just a towel, walks over to the free weight area, grabs two guys who are working out, and walks back into the locker room with said guys. That was an awkward conversation to have with her parents later that week. TL. DR. HS girl invited two guys to join her in the locker room. You forgot dear penthouse. I work in a bank, and we have to review the security footage from the end of the previous day to the next morning. We're mainly checking to make sure the cameras work, as they pay someone more important to look for actual suspicious behavior. While I haven't seen anything particularly funny, there was footage from out ATM that showed a young man in the middle of the night. He appeared to be using the ATM, which isn't overly interesting. What piqued my interest were the two cop cars and the multitude of cops monitoring him. There was a cop behind him, and one to either side. They weren't touching him, but it was obvious they were there with him. I have no idea what was going on. The only reason it caught my attention was the cop cars. They were there for quite a while, which is how I saw them when rolling through the footage. I like to make up unrealistic stories to go with it. Sounds like he was caught doing some sort of damage or stiffing somebody on a bill. The cops probably gave him the option of paying up whoever he wronged and escorted him to the ATM to get the money. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.